Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to continue on with our last video where we were talking about wiring analog signals to an Allen Bradley Micro 820 PLC. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. Also feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. By the end of the last video, we had wired analog voltage inputs and outputs to our Allen Bradley Micro 820 PLC. However, most of your analog signals in industrial environments are gonna be four to 20 milliamp signals. So today we're going to go through how you can wire those to the voltage inputs that are on the base of your Micro 820 PLC. So for this video we're going to be using one of our PLC trainers. We'll also be using the PLC tools SIM-ALP2. This is the analog simulator that can simulate both a voltage and a milliamp signal. We're gonna add a few terminal blocks just to give us a place to land some wires. And we're gonna need a 250 ohm resistor. So let's go ahead and snap our two extra terminal blocks on our trainer. And then we'll just leave our potentiometer wired to input zero. We're gonna wire this to input one. First, let's take our resistor and put it across these two terminals. So our resistor has the two leads coming off of it. Just bend them around and pop one into one and the other into the other. And then along with that, on the same side, squeeze a wire beside each side of that resistor. And then the wire on the left, go ahead and connect it to I-01 or input one on the top of your PLC. It's the fourth terminal from the left. And the wire on the right terminal, connect it to the minus of our DC power supply. And what we've done is we've actually added an additional load into this circuit. And using this Ohm's Law pie chart, which I'll put a link to in the description, we can calculate the milliamps that are going through this based off of our resistor value and the voltage that we're measuring here. And this really is not some homemade way to measure a milliamp value. This is truly how most PLCs measure it, is they'll have a load resistor, measure the voltage, and then they're scaling it. So let's go ahead and add a wire to each of the other side of these two terminals that we've added so we can connect our analog simulator to it. And the left one that's going to our analog input, we're gonna put on our red post. And the right one, which is going to the common of our DC power supply, we're gonna put on our black post. And then let's go back into our program from our voltage exercise, which was just a basic move statement. And let's change this analog input zero to analog input one, where we just connected that wire and let's download it. And if you need help downloading, we have a video on it. And I'll put a link to this whole series in the description. Now let's go to current source mode and let's start bringing the analog signal up. So at one milliamp, we're at roughly 100 units on our analog signal. If we go on up, let's say to four milliamp, we're at roughly four. Now guys, this is a pure coincidence and we'll go through the scaling of this in a little bit. But let's just take that on up to 20 milliamp. And now we're at roughly 2000 units. So to make it a little easier to understand what these units are that we're seeing here, Let's modify our wiring from our last one. Last time we had our digital voltage gauge going to output zero. Let's take it off for now and connect it also to this left terminal here. That way we can read the voltage that we're measuring along with that milliamp signal. So let's flip our trainer around. So now as we run our milliamp signal up and down, our voltage is changing as well. And so if we take this down to four milliamp, we're showing one volt. Now using this Ohm's Law pie chart, we know our load resistor is 250 ohm, and we know that we're putting out four milliamp. So if we want voltage, then we will take our amperage and multiply it by our ohms. Now that's milliamp, so 
it would be four milliamp, not four amps, times our 250 ohms, and that is gonna give us one volt. So if we take it up to eight, then we're showing two volt here. So if we go back to our Ohm's Law formula, then eight milliamps times our 250 ohm resistor is gonna be two volt. And you can go through it. In fact, here's a chart showing you all of them. And yes, one volt through five volt is gonna be four milliamp through 20 milliamp. So now let's scale this value in our PLC. So we were using a basic move instruction before. So the first thing we need to go is what is the scale of this zero to 10 volt signal? Well, it is zero to 4,095 units. So what we can do that with that is we can use the scale instruction and put this into our milliamp value. So just double click up here where it says move. That's gonna bring up your instruction box selector and just start typing scale. And there it is, the scaler. Bring it in. And right away, we have a warning right here on our analog input. If you go to that bottom left corner where you see that little warning icon, it says mismatch between the assigned expression resulting type word and the target real. What that means is everything on this one requires a real number. And this right here is a word. Well, they have a great instruction to fix that. So let's just click our instruction block and drag it down. And if we just start typing any, then this any instruction will convert anything that you have to anything that you need. So right here, we have any to real. We'll click it, click OK. And now we'll take that analog input and put it on the input of that any to real instruction. And then here, we're just going to create, we'll call this our analog raw reel. And that will be a reel. And then we're gonna take that same value and put it right into that scaler. And so that fixes that. Now we have our minimum input and our maximum input that we need to figure out. And at least when you first think about it, it would be zero, which by the way, in this, if you just put zero, you're gonna get that same error because it's gonna treat that as a long integer. You need to put 0, 0.0 and that'll make it be a real. And you would think you would just go to 4095. But the issue is that is for a zero to 10 volt signal. Our milliamps are from that one volt to five volt. So we either need to know that full analog range or we're gonna to have to do some math here. And let's go ahead and do the math. Let's just go here to our calculator. And we know that 4095 is 10 volt, but the maximum of our analog signal is five volts. So if we take that 4095 and divide it by two, that's gonna be our five volt value. So 2047 and a half. So let's take that and put that there, 2047.5. Then we need to figure out the one volt signal. Well, this is five volt. The one volt is gonna be this number divided by five. So divide by five, that's gonna put us at 409 and a half. So that is gonna be our input minimum, 409.5. So then our output minimum is gonna be 4.0, and our output max is gonna be 20.0. And then instead of going to our analog signal, we're just gonna look at this one in the program. So let's create a tag, and we will just call it analog milliamp scale. And that will be a real. And let's go ahead and download this program. So we're showing eight milliamp on our analog signal and we're right at about eight milliamp on our scale value. So if we bring it down to four milliamp, we're showing four milliamp. And if we bring it up to 20, then we're showing right at 20 milliamp. So there's how you can connect a milliamp signal to your voltage input on the base unit of a Micro 820 PLC. Now there is one other problem that we're gonna tackle in the next video, is the range of my output here is four to 20 milliamp. 
And in many applications, you need to stay within that range. But our analog simulator can actually go to 22 milliamp. And if we take it to 22 milliamp, then, well, we're running a little out of analog range here, but we're showing 21 and a half. And likewise, if we bring it down to two milliamp, then it's showing two milliamp here on our scale value. So we can go out of the range. And this can become a big issue on say an analog output or integral wind up on a PID. So in our next video, we're actually gonna create a user defined function block that can be used throughout your program to prevent these signals from going out of their ranges. Till next time. Hey, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.